Hello, and welcome to Trek and Beyond, a Star Trek podcast. I'm Monika. And I'm Andrea. And welcome to episode 13, the last episode of season four of Discovery. We're happy about it. And it's called Coming Home. <laughs> As you, um, so this whole episode is about the DMA is finally approaching Earth and Navarre. Evacuations are underway, but they can't save anyone because there's not enough time. And Michael and the team, they are trying to stop Tarek and book ship and trying to figure out what is going on. And can they save everyone? Can they finally communicate with the DNA, DMA? And is this season worth it? All of this is answered in this episode. Monica, first impression, what did you think? No pressure. <laughs> so I have mixed emotions about this episode and actually about the whole season. <laughs> but this shouldn't be a shocker to folks because um, I felt this way going on. And I felt like they've lured me into thinking that things were going to happen a certain way. Um, and of course, they saved a day. So ultimately, we noticed that Michael has proved her captain that she should be the captain and it's the ultimate Komomashi Maru. There's there's that, there's a lot of mixed emotions about Tarka and Auras that I have. I'm looking forward to talking about that. And then the environmental science underlining theme that's here. Would I watch the whole season again outside this podcast? No, because it's not my favorite. But <laughs> it's an interesting underlying meaning. And, you know, I like Star Trek and lots of drama. So overall, it's a, a May for me. Um, what did you think? Okay. So I feel like I've been saying this all season that it better be worth it. It better be worth it. It better be worth it. Um, I will say this. I was very pleasantly surprised that we saw actual alien beings. Mm -hmm. um they reminded me of the aliens from war of the world so i'll say this the episode gets a plus because we actually saw aliens and that's what i wanted because i was like i don't want this whole these magical beings or it's not magical but you know what i mean like these beings that we can't see and it's just gas because it almost leads up to nothing and this entire season i've been saying i want this episode i want this to be worth it was this episode worth it no um was this season worth it no, so I agree with you that I don't think I would rewatch this season, mostly because it was a letdown at the end. It wasn't we ended up being the bad guys again for like for part of it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I, they always pull out a win. I almost would have been happy if Earth and Navarre were destroyed. Like, and I say this to say there's no stake for them, basically. Like this was, even though I didn't know how they were going to, how they were going to do it, I knew this, I knew Earth and Navarre were not going to be destroyed. And because of that, I didn't feel invested to like know what's going to happen. Like unlike last season with the burn, that, that could have happened at any time. And like it almost happened again um, and people could randomly die. It's like, okay, we know Earth and Navarre are going to be saved at the last minute. I would have rather it been almost like an Infinity War type thing where it's like we save 400,000 people from both planets. That's it. And then like the people of DMA was like, we're sorry. We, we'll shut it off, but it's too late. So this episode was very underwhelming and it led to a season of up, up, up and stakes and stakes and stakes. Yeah. And the payoff was not worth it for me. So let's I, do a deeper. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I would have liked to see some ripple effects of the Emerald Chain. I would have loved to see Oris come back. Oh, we find out that Oris was doing this because of the Emerald Chain behind the curtain, and he was part of this DMA. Um, I just, I also wanted more stakes, and I wanted a deeper connection to the previous season. I was just hoping for more. Seems like we're on the same page there. So let's go ahead and do a deeper dive about this episode, because this was a longer episode, it seemed, um, and there was a lot of small little things that happened. We see on tar on Bookship um, that Tarka is basically, at this point, manic, and he's crazy. Um, he's no longer really listening to reason anymore. He's just like, I have to get to my friend. Um, we see that on the Discovery, um, Michael knows that someone on the Discovery helps uh, Book's people out um, before Book was, like, imprisoned. Um, we see a lot, we see some issues there. We see how Admiral Vance 
Hey, boo. How he is handling the evacuations. Um, we see Tilly come back. Um, I forgot to say that in my initial reaction. I am so happy to see Tilly. We see her coming back and whipping those cadets into shape. Like, you're no longer cadets. You are Starfleet. Help them evacuate. Um, we're seeing a lot of different things happen at one time. And it's giving us the impression that we're like we're down to minutes. When really it's like hours. But it's like, yeah, that sense of urgency. Um, and we are seeing the, we're seeing Vance handle a crisis that he's never, like he's never had to handle before. Because he's handled other crises. But like, how do you mass evacuate two planets plus a um, colony at the same time with only a certain amount of ships? And no one can like do a spore drive, jump and jump back. It's all, everyone has to warp. Because what's his face stole the spore drive and see how you're hurting people now? And they're not part of the Federation at that point. Navarre is still negotiating. Um, Earth is not part of the Federation, neither are the Titans. So there's they haven't even worked out a lot of details to get yeah. to this point. But you're offering the friendly gesture of helping to evacuate. But I'm sure that that adds to the complexity of all of this. So what did you think of... So for me, I did like the scene of him, like, managing the, like, all the ships sort of just, like, yelling everything at once. What did you think of him? Maybe it's just because I, I love that actor. <laughs> but he was just such a G in that scene. Because he was so cool, calm, and collected. Right. But yeah. you could tell he was frazzled on yeah. the inside. But on the outside, he was just like, all right, tell that ship to go. We're going to grab that ship, use them. When this deck is done, they can go. It was just, I was like, hey, daddy. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a disaster you never prepare for. Like, like you can prepare for maybe some evacuation from your own members of the Federation, but he wasn't even sure where certain ships were, how the capacity of some of the ships, trying the best they could in the most extreme case that it was in front of them. Um, all of a sudden, these cadets, became officers and had to help step up. And they were like, well, how many people are going to survive? We're not exactly sure. And we're not exactly sure of any of them. Because <laughs> also the DMA is new. They were just hoping that, once again, Michael would save the day. Um, one last thing. This also shows that, that Vance was in charge because the president of the Federation joined them. And if she was there, maybe it would have been less toll on Vance. Maybe yeah. if, um, or whoever the vice president is or whatever, if there was more leadership around Vance, uh, that would have helped. Because uh, he was left, um, I think, thinking that he was going to be the lone man there. Now, in the end, Tilly decided to stay behind, too. But I don't understand he, that, but yeah. I liked it. But I didn't understand why she, like, why she stayed behind. Like, I get it, but I didn't. Like, I understand you didn't want him to, like, to die alone, but, like, Tilly, honey, why are you doing this? <laughs> yes, I agree with you. I think she stayed behind just to help with his character with some dialogue and some more drama. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise, you just listen to him talk to himself. I don't know. <laughs> so it's like, um, pretty sure he could have did all of that by himself. Tilly, like, did you just not want him to die by himself? Because, I mean, that just say that. Just say that. Like, I, I'm so happy. I, I want you on my screen as much as I possibly can because I did miss you. Make it make sense because this was just sort of forced sacrifice, sacrifice that didn't need to happen. <laughs> Over whiskey. <laughs> yes. Oh, but whiskey's good. Back with the Discovery. Um, They are trying to escape the little orb that they're in and they're trying to commu communicate with the 10C. And the 10C for all of their scientific advancements are like little scaredy cats. They're like, we don't know what's going on. We're afraid. They're trying to stop. I mean, granted, they are, they have a right to be because like Tarka is trying to destroy them. But like the way that they have all this power and yet they're, they act so timid is very interesting. Because um, nothing has really been an act of aggression. It's all been like scientist stuff. So it's like, are you... I want like I guess for me that the tendency is like, oh, we're book smart, but we got no social skills. <laughs> no, I didn't see it like that. I think that they know that they're more powerful, but they're just like, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? We're, we're, like I can destroy them right now. <laughs> so 
so because they didn't destroy them is why I didn't get that feeling. Because like they didn't like push them out and like ex like expel them because they couldn't catch up to book ship. Like they couldn't stop it. And it was just like you could have though. Like if you like you did all of this and you couldn't stop them. Yeah, but I think at that point in time they thought book ship was one with discovery. Yeah. And so they were confused about like why are they separate? Why are they like doing all of this? And so they were just studying, studying, studying. That's well, don't like stop studying if someone's hitting to something that can kill you. Like at that point, it don't matter. Shoot first, ask questions later. Like, <laughs> oh, you're hitting to the thing that could destroy everyone? Deuces, you're done. Um, so we also see that Book is able to get Jet out of the force field because of his cat, which in my mind, why are you waiting till now to bring this up? Like, you can have done this last episode when you first woke up in the force field. Like, why are you waiting till now to do this? Did you forget about it that you did it for grudge? Did you yeah. Make it make sense. This, you, like, this was just put in for this episode because, because find, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. There are lots of things. When Jet mentioned that she wanted sweet and sour soup and that she was hungry, I was thinking, wow, you asked Book for licorice, like, six times you could have asked him to make some sweet and sour soup for you too <laughs> but yeah it seemed like he forgot about that option until something fell behind a force field that reminded him of grudge and this um loophole in the system that he created Sorry. book and jet are able to escape that little cat door thingy which i hope he was able to make it bigger because only jet could have fit through that let's be honest um but we see that book at the little tia tet he's able to like talk to talk 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 her down he um jet escapes back to the discovery um and relays the message he loves you but do what you have to do it's like okay you have to take him out like i'm sorry you have to and book is telling tarka you know you need to stop we have to stop this nothing's good is going to come for it we're going to destroy everything and tarka finally sees the light but it's too late because the process that he started he can't undo in time so no matter what, they're all going to still die. Doesn't that just seem so smart? And there's a part that Tarka says that's such like a slap in the face. He's like, you could come with me. Your world will still be there. And I do like that Jet made a point of like, but it's not. My wife's not there. Not the one that I know. Not his family. Not It's not the people that he knows that are, that's going to be there. It makes me really wonder, Buck, how stupid were you to like trust someone whose plan was to, like, destroy everything in your universe to get to his. Why did you ever trust him in the first place? What are your thoughts? Okay, first of all, this whole season, Book has been acting with emotion. Yes, he should not have trust Tarka over Michael, the Federation, all these other points, but he got in too deep with this and he had a hard time getting out. And by the time he thought about it further, it was um, almost too late. But we have to keep in mind that Tarka this whole time has been thinking about his dear friend, Oris. But are we even really sure that Oris is on the other side? No, <laughs> we're not. He's we're assuming not. he is. So he is also making a lot of assumptions um, and could be doing all of this for nothing. <laughs> that is why false hope is a is a horrible thing. Yeah. Sometimes you got to crush hope. Sometimes you got to crush it because hope makes you do stupid stuff. Yes. And he's thinking more with his heart, Tarka. Uh, we Does he have a heart though? I'm sorry. That was rude. <laughs> we learned that for Tarka, he's only had, he's only had two friends. In his That's whole true. life, <laughs> book and Oras, and uh, he trade them both. Um, end up, yeah, <laughs> he end up uh, putting book behind a force field. He backstabbed Oras. I hope his character's dead. We didn't see a body. I don't know, but that's what I'm hoping. Um, I hope they don't bring his character back, but um, that is a concern of mine. This is all really Tarka's mission, and he should go down with, with the ship. Though it sucks that it's like Book's ship, but yeah. <laughs> well, he took control of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also see that the general from Earth, who I never liked, I never liked, 
But she, you know, like, I want to say Earth is the America of, like, Starfleet. <laughs> she was just doing so much American things in these episodes. And she was confined to her quarters because, as I said in the first half, Michael knew that someone had helped. Someone on the ship had helped Book escape, his, his group escape. And so she admits that it was her. because She says, I just wanted them to stop. Like, I didn't want my planet to be destroyed. And it's like, no, no one wants your planet to be destroyed. But, like, you're just made everything worse. And she's like, look, I'll take the shuttle to destroy Book Ship, to blow up Book Ship. Michael knows, logically, that the actions that she's asking the general to take will kill Book. Yeah. And Tarka, but she doesn't care about him. But, like, will kill it's a Book. It's suicide mission. Yeah. Yes. Like, it's not, they're not going to survive this because the only way to end it is to destroy the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I don't I feel like it was like a double whammy of like bull crap because logically they she knew what was happening but then to find out that they still survived it was like you made her go through his death almost like twice because like one okay I have to destroy a ship there's a good chance he's not going to survive oh my gosh they did survive beam him back and literally book is coming and the ship explodes again and like he doesn't arrive and then we see on her face, like literally, and everyone's face, like the literal disbelief. Crap. Like she couldn't even finish the sentence. Did we? Did. And she just like breaks down for like a quick moment before she like pulls herself together, which I was proud of her for pulling herself together. But it was like, why did we make her go through his death twice? Okay. So I want to circle back a bit before we talk about book to General Nadoe. Mm -hmm. um, so I like the fact that earth is referenced as united earth similar to united states of america i think that's a really i think you brought up a really good point in which it's similar to usa um i though believe that she should have been sentenced to the brig to the place where laurel had to stay um in that force field area not to her quarters she should have been in a more confined area because we already know that she's been able to use technology to get around the system and help book navigate the corridors. So not to her quarters. And there definitely should have been more than one security officer escort her there. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a disservice. I know it's getting into the details, but that kind of took me out of the story for a bit because I'm thinking if a general really portrayed your mission, you need more security over around that person than any than a typical person. Also, I'm thankful they didn't send Dittmer on that mission. Um, I don't think that Dittmer should have. <laughs> that, that would have been heartbreaking if it was Dittmer. Don't put that on her. Don't put that on her. Right? <laughs> but then I was also thinking. Don't they have that hologram way in which someone can also pilot a ship? Like we saw, we saw Paul. Make it make sense. Right. Paul was able to beam into a <laughs> book ship and like be a hologram and control the ship. Then why not do that or some other AI or robotic state or Zora some other way? <laughs> I don't know. If y'all know this, guys, but Monique is spitting some facts real quick, right? Because didn't we see all this technology before? So it didn't make have it make to sense. be a potential suicide mission, and she should have definitely have stayed with her in her court in um, the brig. It's just, she should not have been. Because what if she went rogue again? Like, how do you trust her at that point in time? So, yeah, that was really disappointing to me. And, uh, yeah, it just was going downhill right at that point. <laughs> I am taking a, a survey of one of one and two of you and I, and the survey finds you are correct. <laughs> but you're right. They should she should have went to the brig, and she I, I didn't even peep that part because like honestly the general has always annoyed me, so like I just was happy she was off my screen for a bit. Um, and then also the president being the one to call her back and be like, hey, she really does have some military tactics. This is why I hate the concept of doing the wrong thing for the right reasons, quote unquote, because sometimes you make crap worse. And granted, I don't like to follow all the rules and all the laws, but there's a reason. There are a reason why a lot of things are the way they are. Are all of them right? No. Does everything work out cohesively? No. But breaking something, breaking a rule because you don't agree with it, does not negate you from the consequences of breaking the rule. 
Like, it sucks. It sucks. But legally, you have no cause, to st- no, 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 nothing to stand on. So it's like, all right, general. Or you couldn't have talked to her from her room. Like, you did, why did she need to be there on the bridge? Oh, one more thing. They should have taken her badge. I don't yes. even see why she still had her comms. <laughs> it makes no sense. You are correct. Those are, these are questions we need answers to. We see, um, jumping forward to her blowing up book and everything, um, rest in peace, pour out one for the homie. We see that after his death, quote unquote, I'm just, I'm just going to sit here and say it. I knew he wasn't dead. I knew he wasn't. I, if he had died anywhere, if it had happened anywhere else, I would have believed it. But I knew at that moment he wasn't dead. And I have to say, you guys are going to hate me for this. I sort of wish he was. A lot of this season is his fault. And again, like the general, he broke so many other rules and so many other laws, like dozens. He actively worked against Starfleet. He broke into a ship, was complicit in a kidnapping of a Starfleet officer, stole from Starfleet, blew up, went against, like, there was so much that he did, or he was um, complicit with, because he was he was a team member with Tarka. There's no ending where he's not in jail for years, or whatever their version of it is. And so it's like, yeah, it sucks, but like if he has survived, and granted, I hope, like, again, this is wrong, like he's the last of his kind, so like I do hope, like, he's not the last of his kind, but at the same time, what was the positive of him surviving? Just him being alive and spending out the rest of his life in a penal colony? And never, like, and it's not like Michael could have a relationship with him. Like, you can't have a relationship with a, like, it's almost like you now, like, police can't have relationships with convicted felons and stuff because it makes them, like, vulnerable. He's already proven he can, he'll break the rules and he'll go against Starfleet because he's not a part of Starfleet. How does, how does she ever have a relationship with him to where she can ever be, he can ever be around her on a Starfleet ship, regardless of the fact that people like him, regardless of the fact that he's uh, sorry, you know? Well, after he serves his community service time, uh, then he's free to roam the galaxy again, and Michael might retire one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then they can reunite, because that's the way they're making it seem. As though that they're keeping their relationship open-ended, like they could return together. Um, I think it was a test to see if Michael could make the ultimate sacrifice of possibly killing Book, the one that she loves, for the bigger mission. Mm -hmm. I think there's also a love for the character. He's, as you stated, he's the sole survivor. Always in in Star Trek, there's hope for tomorrow. Quite often, they bring back characters where you don't really see the bodies so you don't really know if they're dead. Um, I didn't think that he was going to die because they kept bringing, bringing Harry Mudd back. Like, how can you keep bringing Harry Mudd back but not book? <laughs> so. Yeah, I guess. But it, to me, it's still just like, while you're still part of Starfleet, how could you ever be with him again? Because it's like when people are likable, it makes it harder to like want to punish them. But like you have to punish him, you know? And I feel like it should almost be like more than a couple years. Like he needs to, like he did like 20 years worth of damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like you're you're working on Europa for like the next 20 years of your life. After we see Michael cry, and I'll admit it, she did it, she did it, she Broke down, but really didn't. Because, like, again, it's an emotional thing. Um, The president putting her hand on Michael's shoulder because, like, it was something that Michael proved that she was putting the the team first, which is what the president always believed she wouldn't do. We see the uh, 10C finally, like, okay, we're, they're going to send another orb. And this time, like, everyone. It's like, everyone. It's like, so many people from the ship are going. Which I was like, is this smart? <laughs> But we we get down to the alien planet, and then this is when we first see the Ten C aliens. And I was like, oh, this is War of the Worlds type stuff, because these aliens reminded me of the aliens from War of the World. I was like, oh, y'all are big. They remind me of the um, aliens from Note. Really? 
Jordan Peele. Like they were in the sky that turned that like kite thing that turned into the alien species. Yeah, that it reminded me of like the orchid or octopus in the air. But okay. <laughs> People who are watching slash listening to this, what do aliens remind you of? Because I don't see that, but I want to know how you see that. I want to know now, because I'm very curious. I would have never guessed the alien from Nope. Yeah. I'm trying to picture that. I'm just super glad they're not a human-like species. Me too. Um, I think I said I wanted them to be humanoid, but I'm actually glad that they're not. Because um, it's more imposing. It's more fearful. You see really how small everyone from the start from the federation really is in comparison to what these aliens look like and there's multiples of them and they're huge and so i will say this this was a win for me even though i just was like okay they still don't talk or whatever if they flash lights fine whatever but i was happy they had a corporal form i was happy that it was something tangible that you could touch them you could reach out and touch them and um i'm granted, i'm not going to because <laughs> they could snap me with one little tentacle but it was nice that they gave a body to the aliens. Do do I think they could have done a better job? Yes, I absolutely positively do. Because we waited literally all season for these aliens. <laughs> um, but I'm happy they didn't have a corporal form and it wasn't just gas. Yes, and I'm so happy too that they not only speak differently, um, but also think completely differently. Yeah. Because there should be diverse thought and there they're more of a unified present. And I'm glad that they showed the difference too between Borg. They're definitely not Borg. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, no, it was great. Um, and then we also see uh, that they're getting more fluid in their conversation back and forth. It's no longer just showing emotions back and forth. It's having a, almost a conversation. And granted, it's, it's like having, <laughs> it reminds me of when someone first, and please, anyone who's listening to this, please don't blame me. But it reminds me of when someone learns English for the first time from another country and they don't know slang yet. And so they only speak in a very proper manner. And I love it because it's just like, oh, I can like trip up your mind by just saying a random word and you don't get it. Um, it reminds me of when I used to work at as a servant. I worked with a lot of people from around different countries and it's like no one used slang or like idioms that were used to, to American idioms. And so the way they were speaking was very formal and very, in my opinion, nerdish for all these nerds. Like, they're already nerds and science geeks, but, like, this was a level of we are one and one, but we're also many. And I was just like, I was laughing so hard at their super proper formal speaking. Because you don't hear that that often yeah. unless yeah. you're learning a language for the first time. Because right. I'm trying to learn a language, and right now the language I'm learning I'm only learning the very formal aspects of it. And it's just like, no one actually speaks like this in the country. Right. So it just, it made me giggle. It's like how they don't get, they don't get slang yet. So it's very much formal. We are one and one of many, but we're also very separate. <laughs> I just thought it was adorable. Yes, I agree. <laughs> um, and then we also see that the aliens, Tennessee, they are talking, they're asking questions, trying to understand what's going on. Um, and I've, I always wonder why they take such a long, the long way to just say what the issue is. But Michael went around, maybe, maybe it's because she was trying to formally explain it. When it's such a roundabout way of explaining your machine is destroying us. <laughs> um, and explaining what Tarka was doing, what, what Book was doing, how their machine had destroyed the earth. I'm sorry, destroyed Quajon. And now it's destroying um, their homes as well and they need to stop it and Tennessee uh, agreeing to doing it right I very think, easily though yeah I think that was the president of the federation not wanting to offend so being careful and with every diplomatic word she could say it <laughs> so and to talk with intention as Saru was typing it into his transparent system for Zora to translate so between all of those layers, <laughs> there is a level of caution there. And um, I'm sure that, I don't know, yeah, just thinking carefully about every word, yeah. And as we can see here now, Monika is the diplomat of the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they, 
make a point to say that we have caused great harm. We are filled with uh, with regret and sorrow, and we will make this right. The t the DMA just stops. They stop it immediately, and it also so shows they are not as connected. Like they're so technologically advanced that it's like a thought and it's done. So, because like with anyone else, it'd be like, all right, putting in the program. All right. right, hold on. I'm typing everything in. It's going to take a moment. Right. And for them, it was like, all right, we messed up. It's over. And like immediately it stops. Yeah. And I thought that was, I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Like they were able to stop. It. I mean, girl also shows don't mess with them. <laughs> right. And they're united as one. They make quick decisions together. Uh, you could see shock on uh, Michael, the president of the Federation's face. Everyone was shocked that it occurred so quickly. Um, but thank goodness, because time is of the essence there. Um, in the end, we find out that they just didn't think that that the life in on Earth and Navar was that advanced. Like the <laughs> like the way we think of ants right now, and we like <laughs> tear down ant ants' nests to build something. Or like, who knows? Like to up to. Everyone in that show, Tennessee, were the monsters. And the monster was like, we didn't even know you existed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it is like, but to other people, the Starfleet and everyone, all those members are the monsters. And they're just like, we're just trying to help you guys. So it's all very relative to what's going on. But then, um, so like what your perception is. So then we see that uh, Michael is still upset and the Tennessee people are like, what's, what, what's wrong with her? Like, shouldn't she be happy? <laughs> And so then Michael has to explain that she loved the guy, that she loved Book. It's, it's such a weird way to have to explain that to, to like, like yeah. when he died, but I loved him. And then right. we were one, <laughs> now <yeah>. we're not. <laughs> and, it's, and then we see that Book comes back because he never died because they just intercepted his beaming. Yes. And now to your point that you were trying to make earlier. Okay, so at first, the first time I watched that through, I was like, what? That's lame. That's a lame excuse ever. And then I started thinking about it more. And then I started thinking about how they've been using the pattern buffer this season. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, something happened and Zora placed everyone on the ship except for Michael beamed into the pattern buffer and stayed there until they got to a safe zone. And then Zora restored everyone so there was that and then also in strange new world dr mabanga placed his daughter in the pattern buffer then i was like oh well i guess there's a precedent there <laughs> <laughs> but out of context it was just weird and the species tensi said that they they noticed that there was beaming taking place at the same time that they just noticed the timing that this was strange so that they were just going to hold on to book state. That It just seemed weird. <laughs> it was a plot point to make Michael grieve more than she needed to. It was yeah. it was unneeded yeah. because store, plot wise, it would have been better for him to die because it, I mean, it would have sucked. It still would have sucked. But like, again, we need stakes. We need there to be stakes of people leaving and not coming back and dying and staying dead. Because it makes it makes the fear of what they're going through more real for future episodes, you know? I'm more invested. Like, this episode, I knew they were going to find a way out of it. So I didn't really... I never believed Earth and Navarre were in danger. And that sort of took the fun out of watching this episode. There were no stakes. There was, like... I almost need like a Game of Thrones level of stakes, where it's like, you don't know who's going to live and who's going to die. And that's why you watch every episode and that's and you get attached to what's going on versus, all right, this whole season we were fighting and now we're going to wrap everything up as a bow and everything was fixed and all the issues that happened are non-existent anymore. And nothing happened to anyone. I okay. understand what you're saying. But if they showed Book's dead body but not Tarka's, I would have thrown the remote control. Oh, no, they wouldn't. They didn't need to show a body. Right, but if, if they both disappeared the way that Tarka did with a little mystery there, then I would be like, well, maybe he's on the other side or I don't exactly know. Um, yes, but definitely if they would have showed Book's dead body, I... 
I mean, no, there was no need. There was no need for that. Like literally, them doing the pattern buffer and then him not arriving was the perfect way to end his death. Like that would have been his death. There was no need to show anything else. And they would have been like, all right, now no one's safe. And now it's like, oh crap, is Earth safe? But it's like it, they never take the stakes as far as they can. And so I'm not invested in like I know they're going to survive. So what am I watching? Right. We know that only the new characters on a mission in Star Trek will die or at risk for death. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about like they could have destroyed Earth or Navarre could have died or the whole Titan colony could have been blown up. There right. should have been something. I mean, yes, Quajon died or Quajon was destroyed, but we didn't know about Quajon until book. So like something tangible to these people on the planet would have been better for me. Like it just destroyed Titan. Oh, crap. Yeah. They just they got destroyed. Yeah. Navarre, I mean, like, uh, yeah, destroyed Navarre because it died in one of the movies. And people said, like, it, give me a stake. Give me a real stake that I can be fearful of next season that whatever big issue that they have is actually worth my time of watching the episodes. And it's not going to all be fixed with the bow at the end. And nothing happened. It's just been a whole bunch of talk of, oh my god, oh my god, and it's four episodes of Earth and Navarre can be destroyed, and Earth and Navarre can be destroyed, and Earth and Navarre can be destroyed. Oh my god, we're about to be destroyed. Minimal damage. Are you serious? <laughs> Give me a couple craters. Give me some mass deaths. Give me something to make me care for the next big bad, because if nothing ever happens, you're just hot air. I understand what you're saying. That's just not typical in the Star Trek TV series. Uh, <laughs> in, this, in this day and age, it should be. But speaking of putting a little pretty bow on it, uh, then uh, the nice thing is 10C set up warp capable, not warp, but um, a wormhole, wormhole so that Discovery could travel back to where to Federation headquarters because the spore drive is um, out of service. And so then the crew is able to reunite and celebrate. And Michael, um, the president of the Federation, the general, Saru, were able to meet the president of Earth for the first time. Yeah, I have no thoughts on that one. <laughs> By the time, the time she showed up on my screen, I was so done with this episode. I did not care. Yes. Like, it was just like, it would have been better if you were president of a destroyed Earth. Okay. I mean, they destroyed one of the, they destroyed Navarre in the Star Trek movie. Could you have just, like, done something more? But uh, the diplomat in me wants to mention Stacey Abrams and the fact that she was playing the role of the president of Earth. And um, although I did not like her suit, I really liked her hair as um, someone who also wears twists. I like her flat twist back. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting to see her. Um, I'm disappointed that she did not like reprimand um, the general. Yeah. Because she just said something simple like, please don't do this again. It's something like that. I know I'm misquoting, but it's like, that's it. <laughs> so hopefully they'll talk later. And then she took Michael aside to have a private chat about the future. That was a little weird, but... <laughs> yeah. It... <laughs> but there's that. And um, later on in the episode, Book had a moment with Michael, uh, which they were able to reminisce and talk. And he uh, talked about his next step um, in community service. Um, with Grudge, and um, I was surprised that they gave him a moment with Michael. Because uh, to... he didn't deserve one, because he should go to jail. Yeah, and they could have, like, had a conversation in a hologram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she, he's a prisoner. He was a wanted man. He, I, was, I was just surprised at that. And then um, he beamed out, and um, yeah, so there's that. Tilly reunited with the crew, um, and uh, yeah, they all celebrated in the lounge. So this season was a lot of ups, mostly downs for me, and I'll get more into that on the next episode when we discuss the entire season four, but the end of this episode, it felt more of a relief 
than an excitement, a relief that it was over for me. Then it was like, I liked the ending. I, I wanted, I, I just want the stakes to match the stakes they give. And now that I know nothing bad will ever happen, I don't see why I should be invested in any of their issues because nothing bad will ever happen. And so it's just a lot of hot air. I want some stakes. I want some bad endings because that makes the story go forward. Those are my final thoughts. Okay. What are yours? For my final thoughts, for me, season one was still the best of the Discovery seasons we've seen thus far because of the surprise with Lorca. And we and they definitely killed off Lorca. Um, and we, there was a lot of drama leading up to that. There was the Red Angel. There's other things, but I just haven't felt that level of surprise and like sophistication in the storyline as with um that that first season Agreed. i've also noticed a lot of characters come and go and that has been disappointing to me because even jet was not at the wrap-up party um at the um with, on a discovery no ship they couldn't afford her fee no more but that's the weird thing in this like <laughs> in the <this> season <laughs> So we got Tilly there, you know, Jet. Anyway, there's, I have a lot of questions. Um, we'll talk about it more in our season recap next week. Um, did Jet get her cocktail? I don't know. Did Tarka get the guy? I don't know. There's just a lot of questions I have. <laughs> and we'll dive in further then. So, as always, I'm Andrea. And I'm Anika. And live long, long and prosper. And prosper. <laughs>